It's been a mystery for 11 years. 55-year-old Joanne Matuk Romaine found dead in the Detroit River some 70 days after disappearing following a church service she attended in Gross Point Farms. Police believe Joanne walked into Lake St. Clair and killed herself. The family believes it was murder. And she goes, if something ever happens to me, look to him. Joanne's daughters say their mother got into a fight with her cousin, Tim Matuk, and for more than a decade, they have pointed the finger at him, saying he had something to do with her death. Tim has kept quiet for years, but tonight, that all changes. I want to come out with my side. Topping our news tonight at 6, Tim Matuk says he's been a victim of a witch hunt and that it is ruining his life and reputation. The 64-year-old has never been arrested or charged in the death of his cousin, Joanne Matuk Romaine, despite that his name has been brought up as a person uh, Joanne feared and that it was has caused a, a lot of controversy. Defender Karen Drew sat down with Tim recently to get his version of the mysterious death of Joanne Matuk Romaine. Kim, Devin, the question, was it murder? Was it suicide? Did he ever threaten his cousin, Joanne Matuk Romaine? Those are just some of the questions I asked Tim Matuk, questions we have been waiting 11 years to ask. What made you decide you want to talk? Well, I have the lawsuits are over, and there's really nothing more for me except for trying to clear my name. Tim Matuk is an reputation. investigator for Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy's office. He's worked on many notable cases. He's been in law enforcement for more than three decades. When Joanne died, he was a Harper Woods police officer at the time. So tell me about your relationship with Joanne Matuk. You know, I've always had a good relationship with Joanne. Matuk says his image has been tarnished because of accusations from Joanne Matuk Romaine's children. I never thought we had an issue. That's why I made that phone call. They asked her, why would she go say that? The phone call he's talking about happened a few weeks before Joanne died. Joanne's daughters say they remember it well. We all of a sudden just hear yelling, like, at this person, we're like, well, what the heck's going on? And she's like, you need to, she's like, I never said you were the root of everyone's problems. I told you to keep your nose out of everyone's business. Joanne hung up, giving that warning. You know, if something happens, look to Tim. Michelle Romaine said her mother never gave her specific details, but was worried. Weeks later, Joanne would be dead. Tim says the call was all about a family fight over Joanne's brother, John, who has a criminal record writing checks with insufficient funds. Why were you calling her? I said, Joanne, why would you go around telling people that I'm the reason why Jamatuk has so many problems? She responded, she didn't want to talk to me, and that I was a troublemaker, and she hung up the phone. I mean, the conversation couldn't have lasted more than a minute. I mean, I've never done nothing to her, and I've not, never done nothing to him, but apparently, their feeling was my involvement in law enforcement must have been the reason. I don't know. Other than that, I can't explain it. Now to the night Joanne went missing back in January of 2010. What were you doing that night? I was working. I was on duty working with a Michigan State Narcotics Task Force. I was in the city of Warren. What do you say to the family who says, yes, you were working that day, but you were on a radio, no one saw you. You could be basically anywhere in the state on one of those radios. Well, it's pretty far-fetched. First off, I would never risk my job over that. I would never leave my partners vulnerable. I would know, you know, if someone was, you know, shirking their responsibilities or trying to sneak out. Bill Hanger was the lieutenant from Michigan State Police who oversaw Matuk's unit that night. He admits he never saw Tim in person, but believes Tim never left his surveillance unit. It would be very, very difficult, almost improbable for someone to be able to leave a surveillance. Matuk says his phone records from that night show he was in Warren. 21 calls made between 349 and 854, the night Joanne went missing. How important are those phone records? Very important. Tells the whole story for me. Tim says he wants the accusations to stop. It's just a constant abuse. It's just a constant harassment. And you just, you know, at the end of the day, I want to clear my name. But remember, the case of Joanne Matuk Romaine is still not closed. From your gut, was Joanne murdered 
or did Joanne kill herself? In my opinion, there's one footprint, one set of footprints that go down to the water. That says a lot. None return. Now, whether she went down there for whatever reason and slipped and fell in, who knows? Oh, there's a lot of questions about those footprints, the crime scene. That's not all we wanted to ask Tim to. So our interview and the questions you want asked continues tonight at 10. So make sure to join us for Dateline Detroit, Secrets of a Small Town. We've tracked down a police officer who has never spoke on the case. We have obtained new evidence not shared to the public and video, which will leave you asking, did Gross Point Farms Police do all they should have done in this investigation? I'll see you back here at 10 o'clock tonight for Dateline Detroit. Back to you.